Okay, uh, I'm going to get started with our next presentation uh, by McAfee, Mr. Uh, Jim Walter. Um, Jim Walter currently serves as a manager of McAfee's Threat Intelligence Service for the Office of the CTO and focuses on new threat research as well as the cataloging and maintenance of vulnerabilities <clears throat> and associated countermeasures. He has been with McAfee for over 13 years and works extensively with the internal sales and support teams to provide knowledge and guidance around vulnerability and malware threats. Day to day, Jim leads a global team of threat analysts and presides over the content generated by this team, the security advisories, countermeasures, detector feeds, global threat intelligence apps, and more. Jim is a frequent speaker at industry events and conferences and co-hosts of Audio Parasitics, the official podcast of McAfee. Ladies and gentlemen, Jim Walter. Thanks, man. Thank you very much. Good morning. Let me just uh, get my coffee out here. So <clears throat> this morning, um, you know, we've got a ton of information to go through, and um, a lot of the topics that I'll kind of touch on, you could probably spend a whole day just speaking about those things. So I'm going to be talking about a lot of things just in general, um, and uh, there's a, a few p points here and there where I'll sort of dive in. Um, but I'm going to leave some time at the end for questions and, uh, and you know, feedback, and then I'll be around uh, uh, throughout the rest of the conference so we can, we can discuss further. Um, but uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, recent threat trends um, and then also uh, what we see coming up uh, with regards to you know, new and emerging threats and threat types, uh, vectors uh, for said threats, and then just you know, any other <coughs> excuse me, interesting bits and pieces uh, that, that we've been kind of tracking in, in the last year or so. So, and, and that's um, uh, uh, you know, the area that, that I and my team live in, in uh, within McAfee and, and uh, McAfee Labs. So we'll kind of kick it off, you know, um, where's my clicker here? Oh, there we go, sorry about that. And you know, there's, there's some, 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 some basic trends that we tend to kind of lump together, especially in the last two or three years here, and we'll, we'll touch on, on pretty much all of these. Um, so we have hacktivist activities um, increasing, you know, the, kind of the, one of the largest faces or brands to the whole hacktivist movement has been anonymous for uh, several years now, but there's uh, certainly many, many more, um, and there's a lot of uh, um, uh, probably much more malicious uh, hacktivism going on than, than what we see coming out of that specific group, um, especially in the last maybe month or so. Um, uh, attackers turning attention from uh, PCs to mobile devices. You know, we, 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 with the proliferation of iDevices, um, Android-based phones, and the like, um, we see uh, uh, just an explosion uh, like we haven't seen in, in quite some time uh, malware-wise uh, with, with regards to threats for those platforms. Um, so we'll talk about some, some basic you know, trends and stats uh, around just general kind of old school malware, your viruses, worms, trojans, all the traditional stuff that we kind of think about but um, sometimes lose sight of with all these more kind of bleeding edge exciting things occurring. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about you know, data breaches, the dangers of them, um, and then other attack types and what some of the trends are around those. Um, and then uh, you know, continuing on through sort of 2012 uh, ongoing stuff, uh, and then into 2013, what are some of our um, predictions? Uh, we'll talk about you know, kind of the rise in use of digitally signed malware, where that's going, um, uh, you know, where things are going with other platforms. As I said, you know, we've got the mobile platform, but there's also you know, the Mac OS and uh, Linux uh, you know, have never been free of malware, but are, are, are continuing to gain um, uh, uh, momentum uh, with regards to volume of malware and their attractiveness to uh, the malware authors and the organized groups that are uh, generating a majority of the stuff. So, you know, and, and I always like to kind of start out these presentations with, with, with these kind of just basic um, 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 stats. And this is, uh, you know, just total kind of unique pieces of, of malware that, um, you know, we're aware of as of a, a couple months ago. But, you know, I, I've, I've been around McAfee for a while. I remember when it was a big deal when we hit um, in our signatures um, the 100,000 mark. And that wasn't, 
you know, all that long ago. That was within the last 13 years. And now we're, we measure things in the hundreds of, of, of millions. You know, this is unique pieces. This isn't necessarily kind of the, the other statistic, which is like what we deal with every day. We see a lot of repeats, a lot of repacks, a lot of generic variation. So this is unique stuff, but it's certainly not, um, uh, uh, you know, if we were to inc uh, uh, include the number for, um, you know, all the, uh, all the reuse of malware, repacking of existing malware in different forms, uh, the number would just skyrocket. So, you know, every day we deal with things in the uh, millions, uh, tens of uh, millions uh, level, um, whereas, you know, 10, 15 years ago, it was a much, much different world and you actually had time for, you know, an individual human researcher to sit and pick apart a piece of malware and run it on a couple physical systems and see what was going on. And, you know, now you have to kind of, based on the volume and, and, and where things have, have gone to with malware, you have to behave in a completely different way from a research perspective and just from a load perspective. You can't do it with humans. You have to use a lot of automated uh, assistance and then bring in the uh, human beings where, where needed with real complex parasitics and, and, and that sort of thing, or, or uh, you know, malware that evades uh, or, or that, that has controls on it so it doesn't run on VMs and all that kind of fun stuff. But at any rate, the, the, the takeaway here is, you know, malware is still around. Um, we, we spend a lot of time talking about, um, you know, kind of the more uh, sexy stuff, the, the ICS or SCADA attacks, the hacktivism, uh, some of the things that, you know, have, you know, a real shiny face on them. But at the same time, this stuff is still going on and it's growing and growing and growing and it's not going away. So it's, it's a good thing to, to kind of remind people of. And this is kind of an older slide that, that goes back, but you can see kind of just how much things have changed from, uh, uh, I include this because it shows all, all the way back to late uh, uh, 2007. And again, this is um, unique pieces of malware. So you just see the, the huge rise. And a lot of this is attributed to um, uh, the, 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 the growing ease in which someone can, can generate this stuff or purchase this stuff or purchase the service of somebody generating it for them. There's a lot of you know, very kind of, you know, it's, it's, since you know, 03, 04, malware has become its sort of own business. And there's a, a, a very intricate and established model um, that is allowing for this kind of growth. You know, malware is about money now. That's why, as uh, um, uh, my colleague from EMC stated, that uh, we, we, we don't see these huge, uh, uh, giant, loud, impactful, outbreaks anymore, like your SQL slammers and your Code Red, your Nimdas. We see uh, very stealth, low level, you know, stay on the box as much as you can without making any noise, don't let anyone know you're there kind of attacks. So we haven't seen like a real good, you know, old fashioned outbreak since, you know, maybe 2006. Since then, um, because there's so much money involved in staying on the system as long as you can, getting as many of these systems under uh, your control as you can, uh, you know, they want to have as, as little bit of a, uh, a, a footprint on the, on the infected host as possible. Uh, and so they do everything they can to stay that way. Um, and it's become a very well-backed uh, and successful business. So again, just going into the uh, uh, general um, stats here, um, you know, new malware for uh, the last couple of years by, uh, uh, by quarter, you know, new unique pieces of malware, obviously uh, still rising for, uh, uh, you know, since 2007, or I'm sorry, 11. Um, now mo mobile malware is where there's a lot of, a lot of real interest. Um, you know, if you think back to um, like 2004 when, you know, the whole bots and botnet thing really, really took off, um, or even uh, prior to that when, um, you know, uh, the, the Melissa worm hit and mass mailers really started, started taking off. You, you have these little kind of peaks and valleys in malware and different kind of uh, innovations that occur. And uh, this is another one of those. You know, the, the open nature by design of, of Android and a, a couple of the other platforms, but Android's been the most prolific, um, uh, allow for a lot of um, uh, uh, capabilities to the malware author uh, to include Android devices uh, in uh, standard uh, botnets, to easily generate uh, trojanized applications that interact with all your standard sort of exploit kit servers, your, your black holes, your Eleanor's, your Phoenix servers, et cetera. Um, all this can be done very easily with, with, with the Android platform because of its open nature. You know, it's not really the case with um, uh, iOS or Windows Mobile 
but uh, with Android, uh, it's very possible. And also, the marketplace is way less controlled than uh, many other competitors. So um, you see you know, trojanized applications actually appearing in the uh, official uh, Android marketplaces as well as unofficial. Now, we see, we've seen a couple examples here and there of that happening in the Apple universe. But um, you know, when it does, it, it, it's, it's pretty quickly squashed. But it's nowhere near what you see with, uh, with Android. And again, just a quick uh, uh, little, little uh, graph showing you a little bit of a breakdown of, of mobile platforms. This is up to the end of uh, Q2 this year. Um, and so you know, there's a lot of mobile platforms that we track. The other column actually does include uh, iOS, so your iPads, iPods, iPhones, ex uh, Apple TV, et cetera. Uh, but uh, Android is by far the, 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 the king of uh, uh, malware's success uh, for, for mobile uh, threats. So <clears throat> exploit samples discovered. And this, 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 these, this stat is, is important. Uh, because this also includes, uh, as I alluded to earlier, um, your, your kind of turnkey exploit kit uh, uh, type packages, your, your malware as a service, your malware as uh, for pay um, uh, uh, options. You know, when you go out to uh, various forums and you've got people offering to set up um, you know, a, a black hole server or, um, or Zeus even, <laughs> which uh, Zeus is an interesting example because there's you know, with any of these kits, there are many, many different versions and variations, some of which are, are way more tightly controlled than others. You know, for, so for Black Hole, it's, it's impossible so far, based on, on the way it's packaged and encrypted, to just, um, for, for a, a version of the builder kit to be released and used by anybody so, so you don't have to actually pay to set up your own Black Hole server. You have to pay, you have to interact with the uh, author uh, and, and, and deal with him. But with uh, some of the other, like Zeus, you can get an old version of, of uh, the Zeus builder and put up your own Zeus server and network and, and uh, do uh, any number of things. Same thing with uh, some, some versions of Black Hole and a few others. And they're very, very quick to include you know, a lot of the new kind of you know, zero days and recent exploits and that sort of thing. So um, a lot of the, um, uh, uh, you know, some of these, uh, uh, Java exploits that have been making the rounds lately uh, that initially were discovered by um, security explorations back in uh, April. Um, once those uh, were leaked and, and the details about those were leaked um, uh, about a month or so ago, they very quickly started appearing in uh, Trojans that were generated from modified black hole kits. So you know, this is a service that you can actually go and pay for if you want uh, to have all the latest and greatest malware building technology. And that's where a lot of these Trojans and a lot of these variations and the volume uh, comes from. So it's, uh, it's, it's very interesting uh, in, 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 in that also it's, it's completely open. You know, if any of us right now wanted to go out and, and uh, you know, do this, you know, we could. Uh, there's, there's forums out there and ways in which you can uh, you know, purchase this stuff yourself. So they're, not, uh, they're very bold in their marketing um, and uh, it's not difficult to find these services available. It's, it's way less underground than um, some, some might be led to think. Now that's that's different from you know some of your you know far more sophisticated you know potentially nation state backed kind of stuff the you know single target uh, very very purpose built uh, type malware situations like your Shamoon your Distrack um, and uh, a few other examples so um, you know there's there's that other extreme where you've got kind of the very accessible side of it your black hole kits um, uh, Zeus uh, but then you've got the um, uh, side of it that um, I, I lump in things like Stuxnet, Dooku, Flame, etc. Um, I'm not going to go into to any sort of attribution stuff there, but they 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 fill they, they fit into that category of you know very well backed, very well financed, highly sophisticated. Uh, probably could have only come out of one sort of entity, uh, you know, type of, of threat, um, as uh, is the case with um, uh, the the recent Shamoon stuff. And, and that's a totally different extreme um, and level of, of intelligence and sophistication that goes into generating those things. Um, the Zeus variants that were involved in High Roller, 
uh, also fit into that category, um, which was a, a very large scale financial um, uh, operation where they actually integrated Zeus Trojans with the uh, back end transaction software between banks and were able to uh, do attacks, um, some man in the middle, some uh, otherwise uh, to, to, to pull that information. So um, there, there's a totally different level there, but there are extremes here. Excuse me. So, you know, there's other things that, uh, that are notable, you know, trend-wise. Um, we, you know, track a lot of malicious URLs, uh, phishing URLs. Um, these are, you know, one thing that you have to take into account when looking at this kind of information is um, domains, uh, malicious domains, malicious sites, malicious IPs, um, you know, may be up for minutes at a time. Uh, you know, so it's not always the best um, you know, it, it's important to note, and it's, it's, it's interesting and, 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 and valid and important to track and correlate um, IP addresses to a threat, URLs to a threat, domains to a threat. Um, but you know, those correlations that are valid today may not necessarily be valid uh, tomorrow when um, you know, another group takes over the domain or um, you know, someone sinkholes the IPs. Um, so you know, it can mean you know, some different things, but um, you know, over time, you, you, it, it is uh, uh, valid to kind of look at, you know, how many successful um, malicious URLs do we see with given campaigs over time? And we, and, you know, we start to see certain groups that um, have uh, uh, a much better efficient, much better ways of utilizing uh, DNS tricks and, 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 and uh, hosting tricks to, um, you know, get their malicious sites up and running and down um, and uh, do some sort of headless redundancy tricks to, to you know, when, when uh, uh, you know, one uh, command and control server goes down, another goes up and, and all kinds of uh, um, uh, fun stuff like that. So we, we, we see that a lot with um, like your comment crew attacks, your elder woods um, and soy sauce and those types of, uh, types of attacks. Um, but another interesting thing to note is that, you know, Oftentimes, with with groups that have been around a while, um, you know these these crime groups that we track, um, you know eventually they do kind of end up reusing some of their old stuff. So, you know, uh, um, you know, Comment Crew, for example, which has been in the news lately with uh, um, I think it was Telvent in in that breach. Um, you know, some of the domains that were being called back to uh, have been associated with um, attacks from that group dating all the way back to 2005. So again, it's valid to track that stuff and know that you know, any purpledaily.com or businessconsulting.net or um, you know, huge soft uh, domain um, you know, has, a, has, a, has a history. And so if you see traffic to those, it, it can ring some bells, but um, you know, it's not always uh, the, the only indicator. So you know, uh, password stealing uh, uh, Trojans, uh, we, we talk a lot about different kinds of malware, different uh, classifications, families, et cetera. You know, you have your traditional you know, parasitic infectors, your viruses. Um, then you have the static uh, type, your worms um, and your uh, Trojans. And of, of, of those, uh, you know, Trojans are, are all, have, have been for some time the most prolific, you know, uh, and, uh, and password stealing Trojans at that, uh, uh, the most uh, uh, prolific subcategory uh, of those. Um, and we see these uh, all the time as just kind of your run of the mill drive by download. You know, the, the, the web is still, you know, the number one vector for uh, contracting malware, uh, malicious sites, malicious URLs, uh, compromised URLs that are running scripts uh, to redirect to other malicious URLs or are hosting the malware themselves. Uh, via, um, and, and, you know, and, and users get to them via a link in a phishing email or um, uh, 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 social media based spam, et cetera. Um, you know, usually you will, uh, this is the most common type of malware you will end up with um, at, at the end uh, uh, of, of that exchange. Um, and then the other side of it is, uh, you know, once they have your credentials, your password, whatever uh, uh, type it is that they're getting, then they, you know, can, uh, uh, Proceed with access in other ways or to other pieces of your your information. You know this. So this includes your your your, your banking uh, uh, type trojans or your um, online game or online community trojans. So when I say password, I'm not just talking about um, you know uh, you know Windows uh, you know, like NTLM passwords. I'm talking 
um, you know, baking site credentials. Um, uh, you know, there's a classification of Trojans that steal World of Warcraft credentials. There's, there's any number of things that, that can be used uh, that um, uh, when they compromise those accounts, they have access to either actual money or um, information that is worth money. Um, so that could be, you know, personal vital uh, information. Or it could be, like I said, with like online games and uh, virtual currencies and that sort of thing. So again, I mentioned uh, a short um, uh, a while back about you know the Mac gaining attractiveness. You know, there's there's always been malware for for the Mac. If anyone if anyone tells you that, uh, you know, hopefully we all in this room know that uh, uh, if you if anyone says the Mac is doesn't get viruses or never has viruses or doesn't you know, isn't, malware doesn't apply, that's not true, it never has been true, there have always been uh, malware threats for the Mac, even going back to the classic Mac OS with things like Auto Start Worms and um, Sub 7 and, and, and a variety of other pretty actually nasty um, uh, 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 threats. You know, the same is true, you know, since uh, uh, they, they switched to the OS uh, 10 platform. There's always been some malware. For a few years when it first started, it was kind of lab animal kind of, you know, let's see what we can do stuff. But um, you know, ever since you know, you know, back 04, 05, when we started seeing variants of the uh, Pupper Trojan, which was at, at, at the time one of the most prolific and successful um, uh, uh, password stealing Trojans, we started seeing ports of that on macOS. And from that point forward, uh, it's, it's been rising. Um, uh, and uh, what we see since 2011 now is, you know, we, we for a long time in the Windows universe had issues with um, you know your your rogue or fake security products, your you know Windows anti super spyware 2008 and that kind of stuff. That you know, it's basically uh, you know low level uh, kind of uh, uh, financial scam software. You know I'm detecting all these things, uh, submit money and I'll clean them or upgrade to the full version and I'll clean them. But there's really nothing there that it's detecting and uh, you know you're buying into a scam. Or the software actually does other destructive things, or or disables your ability to actually get real security software, or disables your ability to communicate with actual security sites, and you know any number of things. The fake AV stuff, or uh, um, you know rogue security product, and and now rogue system utility product uh, universe has been huge for some time in Windows. And you know 2010, it's, we started seeing variants on the uh, OS 10 platform, and and uh, 2011 just blew up completely with Mac Keeper and and a few other ones. Um, and then also, just like in Windows, we, we now see you know, other kind of non-security software sort of variations of that. So system utilities, just other things, you know, tune up your Mac or um, uh, um, uh, you know, audio and video codec, Swiss Army knife kind of utilities that really are actually um, uh, uh, trojanized applications. So you know, there's always been Mac malware. Uh, there still is Mac malware. There's more than there has been in the past, so um, that's, that's, that's definitely not going anywhere. And you know, as, I, as I mentioned, just some quick stats on the uh, uh, fake AV or, or, or rogue security side of it. You know, Q2 2011 was when we saw uh, a lot of the first uh, versions of, I think it was Mac, uh, uh, Mac Keeper, if I recall. Um, there's been a few, so I, I may have the name wrong, but it was it was uh, that or a variant of that. And then once that kind of uh, got out, and, and they started making variants where you didn't have to put in the admin credentials to install it, um, it, it really really exploded. Then you started to see drive-by downloads of that kind of stuff on the Mac, which which uh, you know helped it have a lot more success. Um, so a few more stats and and, and things here, uh, trend-wise. So. Uh, you know, another, an, another popular uh, uh, thing that we like to look at is rootkits. And rootkit here is more of a um, you know, descriptive word of a set of behaviors that a piece of malware may have. So you may have a Trojan that has rootkit-like behavior or a, 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 a worm that does, also does some stealthy API calls. Um, and you know, everyone's version of rootkit is a little bit varied um, and it's evolved over time. But um, you know, typically we look at some, some very specific um, uh, ways in which that software interacts on the, uh, on, on, on the system uh, with the s uh, software or hardware um, and, uh, and make that determination and lumping it into these categories. But there's a lot of very uh, specific uh, uh, Windows APIs that, that, that are leveraged or uh, 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 hardware-based uh, artifacts that you see with some of these. 
and you know, you've got specific user land, specific kernel mode type rootkits, and, and, and a variety of other things. But um, you know, those, those are still um, uh, very much um, uh, growing. Um, not always in volume, but sophistication for sure, uh, especially with, um, in particular, with TDSS and uh, zero access. And we see these dumped a lot with some of the more successful um, you know, exploit kit uh, generation kind of scenarios. Um, uh, there are many uh, specific sort of crime groups that uh, utilize uh, TDSS uh, or you know, TDL4, and, uh, and, and, and basically it's a, it's a very uh, 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 hardened and successful platform for persistent um, existence on compromised environments that, that we see quite often in some of our customer environments. And it is you know, one of the hallmarks of, of, a, of a good rootkit is it's very, very hard to, to repair, very hard to clean, uh, get off the system. So, um, you know, again, that ensures uh, prolonged existence on those machines or in that environment, I should say. So you know, we'll get into uh, predictions here in, in a moment, um, but I just wanted to kind of uh, tick through and, 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 and talk about some other key points uh, here that, that we look at. And you know, one is you know, there's a lot of uh, tracking of data breaches and how those breaches occur. Um, you know, every day you can go out to, uh, to, to read any sort of, uh, uh, um, you know, your, your, your news aggregator or outlet of choice and see who was compromised or, or whose data was, was stolen or posted somewhere. You can go out to Pastebin and search any day for whatever corporation you want and see whose executive's home address and children's social security numbers were posted out on Pastebin or ain't on Paste or, you know, any of those sites. So it's happening all the time. Um, and you know the, the really, really huge ones where the companies act responsibly, get reported correctly, and um, and, and we've seen that rise uh, and and almost uh, in specific correlation with um, you know the, the the success rate of some of these more sophisticated exploit kits too. So again, some of these go hand in hand where we have um, zero day SQL injection exploits that are announced. Those are built into kits, and then suddenly you see uh, more information about breaches occur. Um, you know, botnets, again, um, exploding since 03, 04, um, when we had kind of the, uh, what was it, MyDoom, NetSky, Bagel sort of war going on. But, um, you know, that's, that's really when a lot of this stuff took off and we started to see, you know, just more and more and more of these low and, and, and you know, persistent and uh, you know, very quiet infections. Um, you know, again, um, uh, as we've been stating, uh, with, the, with, with the purpose of staying on the system as long as possible, making as little noise as possible, uh, but um, uh, gathering uh, or allowing for the gathering of, much, as, of as, either as much information as possible or uh, as many resources as possible. In the, in the case of botnets that are used for, um, uh, uh, where, the, where the, the, the resource time is, is, is used for denial, distributed denial service attacks or spam relays or, or that sort of thing. Um, and then we, here we have some of the more, um, you know, as of last quarter, more prolific uh, uh, botnets. You know, there's, there's different names to some of these networks that, uh, you know, different characteristics to the malware um, and different um, uh, uh, capabilities within the network itself. Some having, uh, you know, headless P2P uh, command and control mechanisms, some being very kind of uh, old school IRC driven, some being, you know, completely HTTP based. Uh, so, but at any rate, that's what kind of usually separates these is the functionality and, and the mechanism in which the network uh, keeps itself alive and the clients or the uh, malware associated with it communicates with the servers. So we have, um, you know, Walladak, Bobax, uh, Cutwhale, Grum, you know, all these um, are, are currently the, you know, kind of uh, uh, the, the top dogs that are uh, right, uh, still uh, uh, being successful. You hear off and on about Walladak kind of going down or being taken down, um, but um, you know, that, that hasn't proven to be 100% the case. So here, um, you know, going back to the uh, you know, network threat side of things, um, we have kind of a breakdown of uh, different types of vectors or, or, or methods of um, uh, 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 
infiltrating a, a host or a network or an environment. Um, usually these, these methods are associated with uh, you know, specific vulnerabilities. Um, so we uh, you know, tend to see um, you know, as, as, as new um, uh, 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 high criticality uh, vulnerabilities and, and, and highly visible zero days get announced. Um, that's where some of these top two ones pretty much always fall into place. Um, you hear a lot about SQL injections. Um, a lot of data breaches are very unsophisticated SQL injections. Um, a lot of these dumps where you have um, you know, anonymous or lulsec or any of these groups kind of announcing you know, they've released all this uh, FBI information out on some site. Um, usually that's been achieved by uh, uh, some very, very simple uh, uh, SQL injection te te technique. And they have actually a few applications that they tend to favor when they're doing these things. Um, uh, but uh, you know, cross-site scripting, you see that every day, uh, but it's certainly not, not uh, the top, not anywhere near um, RPC or SQL based. So <clears throat> we talked a little bit about um, you know, trends, what we've seen in the last year or so. Uh, and, and went back a little further. So we'll talk now just about uh, you know, threat predictions going forward and I'll also talk a little bit about a little bit more about you know, hacktivism and some more kind of current events to tie those together. So you know, for 2012, um, you know, the things that, that uh, are, are currently true and will continue to be true for at least for the next foreseeable year, industrial threats maturing, you know, SCADA and ICS based threats and threats to infrastructure it's been on everyone's radar for some time. Um, you know, at least, um, you know, it really started boiling up and, and making a lot of noise on forums and in the industry back in like 06, 07. But it's been a, an issue for, for longer than that. But only in the last few years have people really kind of embraced the, I guess, amount of awareness that's necessary with that. But at any rate, uh, with that um, increased awareness, we have uh, a lot more threats and a lot more people trying to uh, get at these things and, and um, uh, do bad things. So that's maturing. Um, we have hacktivism and uh, Windows 8 based stuff. You know, that anytime something new comes out from Microsoft, especially in OS, um, it becomes, you know, and, and, and they tout the, all the great security features and countermeasures and safeguards, um, you know, that's going to be a target. Uh, mobile botnets and rootkits, we already see this. We see uh, Android devices being incorporated into uh, large botnets. We see um, all mobile platforms being incorporated into um, uh, uh, attack campaigns, you know, distributed denial of service campaigns. But we also now are seeing um, uh, iOS, Android, uh, and um, uh, Windows Mobile uh, actual rootkits that, that function and are beyond just proof of concept. Um, the continued use and uh, uh, proliferation of uh, rogue certificates or, or stolen uh, digital certificates being used uh, to sign malware. Um, we see this a lot. I kind of bring up uh, uh, you know, Stuxnet. It, uh, as part of the uh, ICS and SCADA-based um, you know, example, uh, but you know, Stuxnet as well as Dooku, as well as Flame, as well as uh, Shamoon and a number of other really sophisticated threats um, use a lot of signed uh, binaries. Um, and they do this in order to um, you know, allow their files to, 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 or allow their executables to run in certain environments where they would be trusted otherwise. And, uh, and it just adds to the, the uh, um, uh, obfuscation of these things uh, on one level, but also uh, adds to the complexity uh, of the threats. But Stuxnet is a perfect example of both those things. You know, uh, extremely sophisticated, uh, uh, very targeted, very purpose-driven, uh, long-term attack, um, but not something that you know just everybody has to worry about. And, you know, again, it was uh, you know uh, uh, specific to uh, that machine, that type of machinery, and that type of plant. Um, but uh, there are other attacks uh, uh, that get lumped in with Stuxnet that uh, were a lot more widespread and, and functional in multiple environments. Uh, your Flame slash Skywiper, Dooku, et cetera, would be examples of those. 
um, and, and also those had a lot of uh, signed binaries in them. So um, it's, 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 it, it, there is a correlation there but with the sophistication of the attack, uh, but uh, it, it, it's interesting to see and, and also allows us to kind of trace um, uh, uh, in ter uh, some of the evolution of these threats because we can trace the certificates back and, and make determinations on uh, you know, where those were um, uh, originated from or based from and, uh, and, and then kind of get an idea of age of threats and how long these things have persisted uh, and, and take some other information out of that. Um, so, you know, again, as I mentioned, you know, we say that the, the, these types of attacks will mature, but really they already have, and really they already had before we even, you know, knew. You know, so like you know, Skywiper, Dooku, Stuxnet existed for years before they were discovered, and so, you know, once news broke of those things, it was, uh, you know, th these were huge, groundbreaking, highly sophisticated attacks um, last year, but they were, you know, in some cases, four, five, six years old. So there's stuff going on now that, you know, we can use all this kind of information that we're sharing in conferences like this to maybe tune into because, you know, the, the, the next thing we hear about uh, has probably been going on for some time as well. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll say it's, it's huge, it's new, it's sophisticated, but if it's anything like what we've seen in the last couple years, it may not necessarily be... Um, uh, a, a brand new piece of code. You know, this may be stuff that's been in development in the works for, for a while. And so it's important to note that as sophisticated as these threats are, they were sophisticated years ago. And we can do a lot more, we and the bad guys can do a lot more better, cooler stuff now, I would imagine. So, you know, that's, that's kind of something to, to keep in perspective when, when we talk about these threats. But again, there's a number of other examples of these, these uh, 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 things that have occurred, these attacks, these events. Aurora, Night Dragon, um, all the common crew stuff. So uh, it's, it's, it's ongoing and expanding. Um, high Roller, again, I, I mentioned that uh, a while back. It's important to note that because of the sophistication of their interaction with the uh, financial software involved, um, you know, they use a lot of Zeus variants, but they did have it tied into some back-end software that required some very in-depth and specific knowledge on how that stuff worked, how to get access to it, um, you know, there were plays on social engineering as well as traditional kind of cyber um, uh, vectors. So, so that all came into play here. Um, but, you know, again, uh, 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 key points about the, the impact of that one. Uh, Dollar-wise, it was one of the biggest attacks we've seen. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, it, just the purpose-built uh, 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 pieces of code that were used to interact with the to, to, to modify Zeus to interact with uh, the, 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 the back-end banking structure was something we had not seen before. This is a recent one here. Um, you know, this this uh, 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 is another good example of a recent um, uh, uh, you know, critical infrastructure type attack. And, and this is, um, you know, again, a, a group, um, you know, from what we know so far, current Intelligence suggests that you know the the the, the group behind this uh, attack on uh, uh, Telvent was you know this, the 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 com what most people call the Comet Crew or um, uh, there's a couple other names for them Soy Sauce etc. But um, you know all they. The, had the same uh, 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 method of, of getting in, heavy on social engineering, heavy on very you know single use malware involved. Um, uh, you know, so it's it's stuff that you know you would only see in that environment on that particular host when it happened. Um, you know, but as I also said before, with this particular group, they tend to end up reusing certain information. And in, in the case of this group, it's it's usually uh, their domain names that they uh, dynamically register. So we've seen group activity from this group using businessconsults.net, Purple Daily, Huge Soft, um, and there's a, a variety of others uh, that uh, for, for for since about 2005 we've we've been able to track them through this. But another good example of, of a very sophisticated, very capable group uh, that is um, uh, able to compromise. Uh, very sophisticated, very capable uh, companies and entities in a highly impactful way. And in the case of this one, you know, they actually were um, uh, stealing uh, 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 plans, modifying uh, project documents, and doing a variety of other things to, to sabotage uh, the target. 
Um, so going a little bit into uh, uh, hacktivism here, um, you know, again, the, the, the face that usually gets put on this is, uh, and I'm kind of speeding through because I want to leave time for questions, but, uh, uh, you know, the, the face that we usually associate with this is, uh, uh, you know, anonymous and uh, uh, a, a few other groups around that. You know, they've been around for a while and they are, uh, have, have uh, you know, marketing-wise, they're, you know, genius. They make it very easy to associate yourself with, with their cause and with their look and with their feel. Um, and, you know, at the same time, um, you know, anybody can speak uh, for Anonymous or be a part of Anonymous, um, uh, and there's mystery and, and confusion as to whether or not, you know, any particular action is actually an official Anonymous operation or not. Um, we had the, the, the GoDaddy issue a couple weeks ago where um, uh, someone under the alias, uh, um, uh, I think it was an uh, uh, anonymous owner, um, came out and said, you know, I did that, that was me, my work. Um, and so uh, as soon as that happened and, and, and people noticed all the GoDaddy domains were down, all the news was, you know, anonymous takes down GoDaddy. And then a couple hours later you see, well, actually it wasn't official anonymous, it was just this guy, uh, and it turns out he said that, well, it's not officially anonymous, but, you know, I'm, I'm called anonymous. And so there's, they, they create all this confusion, or, uh, you know, the loosely associated individuals create a lot of confusion. And that's interesting, but also one of the kind of uh, um, uh, 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 issues with, with their group as well. Um, you know, anonymous as a group is, um, you know, like I said, marketing geniuses. Um, you know, you can go out to certain sites and you can download a little... Um, uh, 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 sort of like a, 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 a EPK and get your printable um, uh, uh, mask uh, and, and uh, you know, all the uh, utilities you need to uh, you know, uh, access their chat rooms through Tor, um, all on a nice uh, uh, sort of a, a purpose-built uh, VM image. And, and it's very easy to kind of get into that uh, community. All their chat rooms are open. Um, you can always tell who they're targeting and when just by looking at the IRC um, uh, uh, network, and they have a specific channel called uh, uh, DDoS, and there's a command called target where you can go in and see who they're targeting. So they're very open, um, and it's very easy to see what their activity is, and, and, and that's by design. But at the same time, um, it's very unsophisticated. You know, their methodology is nothing that uh, hasn't been around for a, a long time, many years, and, and isn't easily um, uh, counteracted. You know, their, their weapons of choice are often variants of different ion cannons, low orbit ion cannon, high orbit ion cannon, or different, you know, pylorus, uh, pylorus or slow loris, or all these, you know, DDoS tools or resource exhaustion tools that have been around for a while. They're open source, everyone knows how they work, and you can easily counteract them, and that's the kind of stuff they're using. A lot of their biggest claims in terms of destructive operations, you know, have never really actually panned out. Um, the uh, uh, global takedown operation where they were going to uh, knock down all the root DNS servers, um, the refref tool that they were going to come out with that was going to be, you know, this huge DDoS tool that um, outdid uh, everything that we've seen before never came out. So, um, you know, Anonymous, in terms of activity, is, is, has a way larger and influential presence physically in terms of their physical protest operations than their cyber stuff. But at any rate, you know, interesting stuff to, uh, to look at. I mentioned the uh, 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 chat network here, but again, you can go at any point in time and kind of look and see what they're doing. You know, example of uh, one of their tools here. Um, this is another recent one. Um, and this one, uh, uh, you know, very, uh, um, it's starting to make the news now, um, but uh, this was an attack on a few banks um, uh, last week. And um, we started to see kind of the, uh, murmurings around it um, a little bit before that when the pay spin pay started to show up. But again, even with this, um, you know, uh, 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 you know th this was a, a, a protest uh, um, uh, based on, you know, the, the YouTube's uh, refusal. It started out as a protest based on YouTube's refusal to, to take down the anti-Islam stuff. But, um, you know, it, it ended up being, you know, against banks and a few other entities. But um, even stuff like this that is a little bit more politically motivated and uh, visually a little more scary looking, um, you know, and here's the uh, web page where you could go and start taking part in the uh, operation. You have a little start button where you can start doing a DDoS against uh, um, uh, uh, NASDAQ and Bank of America. And, um, 
but uh, you know, even this was based on low orbit ion cannon. You know, if you look at the code of that page, um, it's the same old loic that you would find on GitHub. Um, so you know, again, this is not sophisticated stuff, and uh, most environments kind of, you know, whether you even know it or not, probably have uh, controls against this. So it's, uh, you know, for the type of operation and the impact they want to make, it's, you know, certainly a, a very obvious and traceable tool, but definitely not one of the more sophisticated ones either. So I keep mentioning like sites like Pastebin. Anytime you want to know what a lot of these cybercrime groups are doing or these hacktivist groups are doing, just go take a look at this. If you've ever spent any time just searching Pastebin for stuff like attack or SCADA or energy or um, credit dump or name and password or credentials, any of those kind of terms, will, 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 you'll find all sorts of interesting stuff. And there are many like it. There's Pastebin, Pasty, Anon has their own one called Anon Paste. So those are things you can look at. There, and, and there are um, uh, email services you can subscribe to that actually scrape for terms for these to make it easy so you don't have to sit and look at the sites all day. There's Maltigo transforms to uh, scrape the stuff. So it's actually gotten to the point where this is a great source of information if you really want to know what a lot of, what a lot of the stuff that's going on is. So if you haven't started to love Pastebin, do so in the, in the similar sites. Um, you know, moving quickly through uh, uh, the rest of this uh, for, for questions, you know, mobile threats, as I said, taken off huge, especially with Android, and that's going to continue. We're seeing a lot more sophisticated stuff from the rootkit side on Android um, uh, that is you know, installable with very little user interaction. Um, and uh, you know, at that point, it's anyone's guess as to what the attacker wants to do, but they basically have you know, full control of the phone, full control of the information or data on the phone, and uh, you know, can, you know, just like any um, standard you know, PC, uh, can, can basically have their way with it. Um, and then again, as we said, with uh, things like Stuxnet and Dooku um, and a variety of other pieces of, uh, uh, of malware, um, we, we're starting to see a lot uh, more of the stolen certificates used. Um, and, and even um, recently, Microsoft has recently had to issue uh, some revocations around um, uh, and, uh, some, some targeted attacks using stolen certs. Just last week, uh, Adobe did the same thing. They released an advisory um, uh, around uh, a specific set of stolen certificates. And you know, once we got the information about the cert and started searching through our malware database, sure enough, there was a whole bunch of, uh, of, of samples that we had uh, intercepted using that cert. So it's, it's real stuff and, and something to take note of. Um, just pictures of uh, stolen cert. But here you see kind of the trend from September uh, of 2011 to uh, more recent kind of the uh, uh, unique uh, signed malware with compromised certificates that, uh, that we've, we've been tracking. This number will be a lot higher now that we've had the last two months of um, you know, one from Microsoft and one from uh, Adobe coming out. So it was, uh, we'll have to pull a recent one here soon. So you're know, just kind of you know, wrapping stuff up. Um, you know, I think it was refreshing with the last speaker to, to, to hear so much emphasis on education. Um, you know, being from McAfee, you know, I'm not from the product side, so you know, I, 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 I wouldn't stand up here and try to sell McAfee products but um, you know, there's there's a place for products uh, and a place for countermeasures, and they do their job. But you have to have the education side of it. You have to know who these groups are. You have to know not only about the existence of these threats and of these pieces of malware and different kinds of malware and the groups and why they exist and where they're coming from, but you also need to have the the, the knowledge of of where they're uh, you know, where they're coming from, who's creating them, why, what it means. Um, and, 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 and then start to familiarize yourself with the environments in which these things um, occur. You know, if you start to kind of um, you know, monitor pace bin, um, uh, kind of figure out what some of the forums are that, that you can mine to see where the marketplaces are for different exploit kits and, and, and services that are offered and you know, where you can go to buy and sell Facebook credential dumps and you know who's targeting Pinterest today. You know all that information is out there and not not impossible to find. Um, and knowing 
how to sort of mine for that stuff, either manually or through tools that you have in your environment, um, not only do you find out a lot about those specific things, but you also start to, to kind of pick up other bits of knowledge and information and chatter that will help you with other, other incidents in your environment. So it, it plays into just kind of the educated um, uh, 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 piece of it. So with that, I'll kind of wrap it up. You know, I do want to leave some time for questions, uh, but um, thank you very much.